Everybody, welcome back to Falcon Plays uh, Dark Souls 2, and we're now at the Undead Crypt. Um, as of this recording, the last episode, I am going to have to do a um, post-commentary on it, because unfortunately I am an imbecile, and I recorded the game, but I didn't actually record my commentary alongside of it, so I'm going to have to do that post-commentary. I'm not sure how that's going to sound. Uh, now that we've seen this, you've probably seen that one already, so hopefully you'll let me know how that worked out. I'm not really that much of a fan of post-commentary. I feel like I work better when I'm recording on the spot. There's a little bit more emotion, a little bit more involvement in the game. I feel that I tend to ramble a bit when I have to do post-commentary. That's why I try to keep it live most of the time, so I'm a bit more focused on the game itself. This individual over here is not going to attack you, so um, keep that in mind. However, you want to get rid of him at some point for a particular reason up above. This area over here is going to be a clusterfuck. Um, the Undead Crypt, I, I like the area, however, I also try to run through it as fast as possible because there are going to be a certain few amount of dick spots that we will run into later. Um, I hope that you have a bow for this area, by the way. What are you doing? You're sending those uh, crazy things after me. Okay. Alrighty, Hex Spell Lady. Yeah, you do that. Go ahead and do that. Fire Dude, you need to relax for a second. Fireman won't attack you. Um, I'm going to call him Fireman 5000 from now on if you are aware of uh, terrible early 2000 music or late 90s is it er no it's early 2000 right power man 5000 yeah uh this is what it's like when well sorry right, whatever um <laughs> i'm toned up so keep i keep uh, forgetting all the time that i should probably not sing well, at any sort of moment notice there so you want to go ahead and take care of that woman from afar you don't have to you could kind of rush in there and like you know it'll you'll be okay as well however i like to simplify things for me and you know what ever since the shrine of amana taught me a long distance uh, attack of some kind is actually really beneficial to your overall well-being. I think I should have poisoned her, totally. Let me just dive out of the way of that. So poison will basically uh, be the end of her. And I guess we could just probably go in here now. Don't get ambushed by this guy, though. This guy will not be as pleasant as his friend actually holding the torch for you. It's weird because the guy holding the torch for you actually works as a mechanic to um, guide the area for you since this area is actually pretty dark. And I apologize too for this area being dark, hopefully. It doesn't look too terrible on YouTube, because YouTube doesn't like uh, dark colors too much. Which makes it sound like it's racial or something. It's not really racially inclined, I assure you. Let me get rid of this woman here, and what is she going to drop for us? A magic stone. These women will drop their, like, robes for you. Which, um, you know, sounds all fine and dandy. I'm sorry, Torch Dude. I'm, 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 I appreciate you lighting up the area for us, but it's time for you to die, because I can't take you beyond this point. We also got the Black Witch Staff from one of the people that we killed here. Uh, I guess it's a decent staff if you're into casting... Things. I haven't done a casting run just yet. It's kind of weird. Over here is going to be kind of interesting, though. The reason why I wanted to kill that torch man before he got over here is because of this. Alright, so that right there is obviously this dude over here talking. He wants us not to produce light. If you bring in this guy, if you yourself have a torch lid, or if that man follows you in here with the torch, everything in here will go aggro on you. Because you can see right here, these are actual enemies in the game. And they're gonna let me just fucking push them around and punk them around. Or at least attempt to. I move them a little bit. Just kind of keep them honest, you know, making sure that I'm the boss around here, even though I would rather not get involved in a physical alteration with them. Or altercation with them, I should say. Let's talk to this NPC, though. I am Agdane. Guardian of the Crypt. Countless dead rest here in peace. Cradled by the comfort of dark, light only agitates. We have no need for it here. I am a finito. We weave death and watch over the dead. This task was granted to me by the one who gave us the first death. Countless souls rest here. Some of them from ages long ago. Some were rich, others poor. Some wise, some dull, but now... They're all just... dead. Did you come for him? The one called... Fendrick. You will find him deeper inside. Many castle servants and the like have come to fetch their lord. But they rest here now. Put to death by the king's own guard. Perhaps... He's not... In the past... Humans were one with the dark. The former king of light, he feared humans. Feared that they would usher in an age of dark. How queer are you humans. How you go on, never separating truth from fiction. This place is welcome to all, provided 
due reverence is shown. Death is equitable, accepting. We will all one day be welcomed by her embrace. Tell me what you desire. Show me reverence, and I will lend you my hand. Alright, so that's gonna unlock um, Finito as a, or Agdine, I should say, who is a Finito, as uh, an NPC summon for you. Um, spoilers, I'm not gonna summon him for the fight, though, because it makes it incredible a lot more difficult than it really should be. Uh, let me talk to him a bit more, and he's gonna do the same thing. Alrighty, so essentially, this guy was really important, too, in terms of lore. He talked about many people coming after to seek Lord Vendrick, and they've been put to rest by his guards. Obviously, Weird aren't the first chosen undead. A lot of undead or chosen undeads have come in to try to do their own thing, and they've actually fallen before actually succeeding in their quest, for one. Number two, he talked about the former King of Light being scared of humans ushering the uh, Age of Dark in. If you want to make the assumption that it's Lord Gwyn, go ahead. I agree with you. Uh, I do believe that he is talking about Lord Gwyn, who uh, was the King of Light. And then he, what it, Lord Gwyn uh, was feared of the most, uh, the Age of Dark coming in, and basically the humans bringing that Age of Dark in. So that's a really interesting NPC. He tells you a lot of other stuff, too. But those are the big things that I actually really focused on that I thought was pretty cool. Uh, he does sell a few items as well for us. Uh, Shield of the Insulin. Uh, insulin equipment. Yada yada yada. Ring of Thorns plus one, which is pretty good for PvP, I hear. Uh, he does sell some Dark Arrows as well. Human Effigies if you want to stock up on those. And a few spells right here for you. Uh, I don't have much money right now I should mess around with, but let's see if I could... Uh, I don't know, I guess I'll get a few of these arrows. Might as well. No reason not to. And we're good to go, right? Farewell to you indeed, Agdine. Don't call me human, I have a name. Don't classify me by species, bro. Alright, so let's continue forward over here, and we're gonna finally get involved in some actual hand-to-hand -hand combat. And as you can see right here, these guards, if you remember them, you need to relax, alright? As you remember these guards from, uh, Vendrick's Castle, or Castle... Strangling Castle, I should say. Let me just go ahead and give this guy a sweet little backstab right there to show and moves boss to the whole situation here. Don't leave yourself open for a situation like that, guard, or knight, whatever you want to go with here. Now, uh, spear dudes are kind of a little bit annoying, so I'm not even going to bother with them. He's going to backstab them because I definitely fucking can. And before we move on, let me just jump down through here because there is a way for us to get an important item. Well, not really important, but at least it's important if you kind of want to do some NPC quests later. Uh-huh, one more should do it. There you go. Love the halberd, man. Such a good weapon. You could even use it as a makeshift spear at times. It's really, really awesome. Um, and we are going to be able to come down through here and use this ladder to kind of go up. Uh, be careful. Don't get ambushed once you get up here because there will be a dick um, hollow waiting for you over here. He's going to stand there. Okay, well, I'll just I'll, I'll come to you, I guess. What do you drop for us? Prisoner's gloves? Okay. That's all good. Not useful, but whatever. And over here, you're going to be finding the Crushed Orb, I do believe. Crushed Eyed Orb. All right. That's what you're going to need in order to um, do an NPC quest. Now, if you remember from Dark Souls 1, there was the Black Eyed Orb, right? And it was kind of used to invade, um, what was his name? I always fucking forget his name. Uh, if you know his name, be sure to let me know. I always forget his name, even though he's one of the, like, the most interesting uh, characters in the game, because he's uh, kind of a dickbag in reality. But uh, he has his uh, purpose in the story as well. But yeah, it's going to work like the black guy orb that you use in Dark Souls 1 to invade the world of a certain NPC. Let me go ahead and run over here really quickly, light this bonfire, and also reset the enemies while I'm at it. Not that I really have to worry too much about that hollow chasing us right here. Go away, hollow, right? Your time is done. This area, a little bit of a pain in the ass. And the reason why is going to be because of these, uh, I guess, monoliths over here. So really quickly, let me just bring down these rocks, and he hasn't spawned yet? No, he hasn't. All right, so now let's just go in it for the kill here. All right. We sure, let's sure to get rid of this guy. Don't highlight that guy. I don't care about him. One more should just about do it. Please break. Oh, God. All right, so that right there is going to be one of the most asshole fucking enemies that you encounter in a goddamn game. <laughs> these dudes summon all sorts of pyromancies, and they could just really ruin your life. It doesn't matter if you're a New Game Plus. New game regular, they will be total dickbags about the whole thing, and they'll continue spawning infinitely until you break down that, uh, I guess, monolith that they're at there, or graveyard, whatever you want to call it. Well, not a graveyard, but tombstone, statues, tombstone, whatever. So we're going to have one more over here. I normally have to get rid of these before they even become an issue is a problem, so... Uh-oh, 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 uh-oh. Go away. Uh-oh, uh You are making things quite difficult, Hollow, because I just want to get to the 
pyromancer here before he starts uh, shooting spells at me like a total dick bag. All right, well, cool. Set your own tombstone on fire. That's quite all right. It's your prerogative to do so. Let me just run away here. Is he dead? Did he die somehow? I think he might have died somehow. <laughs> oh, hey. All righty, and I believe these hollows will indeed also spawn infinitely as well, so kind of an annoying situation. This over here is going to be a few Titanite chunks, uh, or actually just one. For some reason, I felt that there was more in New Game Plus. I, for some reason, I thought it gave me three, but, you know, I could just be wrong. If you go up this ladder, you'll also be able to ambush a another one of these uh, pyromancy people before she even gets a chance to snipe you if you were to take the door around over there, as you can see. So you definitely want to go up over here to get rid of her first. And, ah, uh, she dropped a dark... Was that a dark quartz ring plus two? If that was, that's pretty amazing. I don't think I've gotten that dropped from her before, and that's pretty good. I'm gonna get some Twinkling Tonight, some Dried Fingers, and Bonfire Ascetic. I do believe the Dried Fingers work as a way to um, lower your invasion count. So if you want to, like, uh, be a ganker and whatnot, that's how that's worked for. There's gonna be one more um, of these monoliths that I'm gonna deal with before we proceed. I would have loved to have attacked this man. Good, I did. Let me do this one more time, break this before he spawns again. Excellent, alrighty. So I got rid of the important ones. He drops the Lady of White Rope. And then the uh, female ones that are up there, the one that we just killed up above, actually dropped the black version of that. So there is a little bit of a lore perspective there for sure, I gotta imagine. Let me grab this, just because I am a stickler for grabbing items, even though they're sometimes useless, like, you know, Soul of a Lost Undead. Alright. Uh, I think we're good to go. We're about to get invaded again by the Nameless Usurper, if you remember that individual that loves to invade all the time. Uh, the crushed eyed orb that we got is indeed going to be for the Nameless Usurper. Soon enough, we'll be able to deal with her once and for all. Hollow, I'm going to get invaded right now, so you need to relax. There we go. So let's see here what we're going to do here. Well, I'm just going to start off by missing, if you don't mind. Alrighty. Yeah, you use all of your dagger attacks that you have to. Unfortunately for you, you're in a tough spot here because I do have the range on you. Now you're going to just two-hand it now. Okay. That's okay. You're allowed to do that, but I really advise against it because you are pretty much done and over with now. Not really a big deal when you have range over a individual with a dagger. Um, the last thing you want to do with the Nameless Usurper is actually block too much because then they, she will. Uh, I say she because I'm jumping the gun here, but uh, any invader will indeed uh, try to break your guard and especially since she has the dagger her critical attack if she decides to follow up on the guard break will indeed uh, cost twice as much damage which is no good for business uh, over here in this area we're gonna start rushing a little bit because these guys are number one really dicks to deal with and I'm not sure what even triggers them from fucking attacking or moving but you have to wait here for a little while so I'm gonna just try to sneak in between them sometimes it works sometimes it doesn't uh, it didn't work this time and there's going to be assholes spawning from the walls next to us. Uh, if you don't mind, I'm going to run around you. And now, over here is the tricky part. i got to find the right exit. I always get lost here. Don't get lost this time, Falcon. Oh god, I'm lost. Here we go. Um, I'm running away from here because there's going to be four of those uh, monolith tombstones that we dealt with earlier. And there's also going to be a mechanic in there with the... I guess the hollows that spawn will actually ring the bells, awakening all four of the pyromancers from their uh, sleep, their deep slumber from that. Over here, this will give you a shortcut to the area that we just went through to make it a lot easier. So they will indeed ring the bells and it's going to awaken four pyromancers. And then if you have four pyromancers shooting all sorts of pyromancy at you, it's not really good for business. So we are definitely going to avoid that if we definitely can. Um, what the hell is this? I forget what this is all the time. A magic knight, a magic stone and a dark knight stone. So if you're looking to infuse weapons, there you go. And there is a drop point down over here, which you could uh, drop down. Uh, let me jump back here really quick. I felt that I was going to actually kill me. Where is the drop point? Is it down over here? Oh, it should be over here. Now, what this does is actually just works to light up the area. I'm not sure if it has any sort of bigger significance other than that. Is this a trick chest box? No, it is not. Soul vessel. All right. There's going to be a ladder up here, but what you want to do is go down through here, and it's going to light up the entire area for you. Again, I'm not entirely sure what its use for is, um, other than lighting the area up, but whatever. Uh, I'm not sure if that's going to piss off uh, old uh, Agdine over there and his Melfinito crew, but that's still a risk that I'm willing to take just so that we could kind of prettify this little area a bit and bring the light about. So as soon as you light this up, Everything should start happening, right? Come on, do it. Do the light show. There you go. And if anything, it at least serves for a pretty interesting look as to what's going on over here. We have these dark rates from Lord of the Rings, apparently. 
All right, so there you go. Um, if you want to light that, it's lit up, and uh, this ladder over here will take us back to the bonfire. But we're not going to use the bonfire, because then people are going to be respawning, and we don't really necessarily need that. And there is another item over here. What is this? Soul of a hero? Okay, good. So if you're looking for soul items, that's the way to do it. Don't. Why do I have to jump over? Just jump off. All right. So, at this point, we're essentially done with the undead crypt. Uh, I did skip the little area where those uh, pyromancers spawn, but again, I shared my <laughs> reasoning why, because I'm not going to deal with that. And we're actually almost about to finish up this area. We're going to actually deal with the boss of the area really soon. Uh, again, there's going to be one more mechanic here where this asshole hollow is going to try to ring this bell. Don't let him do that or else you'll be making life incredibly difficult for yourself. Don't do it. Don't go, about, don't go to that bell. I know what you're trying to do. And I don't like it at all. Alright, so kill him, because he's going to uh, eventually ring this bell. You could hit the bell, too. So uh, be sure not to attack him too close to it. And what that's going to do is that all these uh, little tombstones here, graveyards, monoliths, uh, ma mausoleums, whatever you want to call them, will indeed spawn one of those pyromancers. And if you thought four of them was bad before, all of these here are going to be a pain in the ass. This area, you could try... It's really annoying. You have to deal with a lot of these Vendrick guards, or Dranglet Castle guards. And I don't like doing that, so what I will do instead is switch over to some poison arrows and see if we can start getting the jump on them to a degree. It's going to spawn quite a few of these assholes, unfortunately. Am I just missing this guy completely? Or? Yep, apparently I was. Alright. Yeah, so as you can see, there's going to be quite a few fights with these dicks over here. I hate this area. It's probably a lot easier for you to just try to run around them, outmaneuver them. But, um, for the sake of this, I don't want to make it too much of a wild card situation for us. Let me drop a Estus Flask here. I'm usually pretty decent at the Veltstat fight, which is really surprising, because initially when I fought Veltstat for the first time, he just rocked my shit continuously. And then I was able to beat him in New Game Plus easily, so I'm not sure how that worked, but it definitely did work for us. Those two guys are dead. Now, they're not difficult on their own, as we've all seen before. It's just once they start crowding you with, like, numbers, that it's kind of like a pain in the ass, because they do love to, uh, I guess, put up shields a lot, and makes life a little bit more difficult, especially if you want to go in there for a guard break, when you have, uh, two more of their friends just kind of hounding you and whatnot. Of course, he's gonna run with his shield up, so, unfortunately, my poison will not take any effect here. But that's okay. At least as we deal with one of them, it's not a big deal. Once we deal with more than one, then that is when problems start to arise and there you go somehow he got a hit on me which is kind of ridiculous but no big deal I'll just uh, definitely take that hit without too much of afterthought now my goal here is to well my goal here was to trigger one not two because now we're put in a situation once again all right so let's see if I can trigger both of these guys to attack in unison okay cool longest uh, sword of all time longest sword of all time again all right whatever Hitboxes in Dark Souls, right? Can't complain. Well, I mean, I can complain, but it's not gonna get me do. It's not gonna do much for me to do so. So you do your thing. All right, dick. You know what? I'm gonna guard break you. How do you like that, huh? So this is what I meant by dark, br uh, dark break by guard breaking. You know, if somebody's shielding up a lot, you can just hit forward and the light attack, and it will break their guard, and then leave them open for a critical attack from the front as opposed to the back. This right here is how you summon Agdine, but we're not gonna use them for this fight. Um, and I don't think you really get anything from using him for the fight, or maybe you get his uh, armor set if you use him in a fight. I, I honestly forget. But to me, it's better that you don't summon him. At least, uh, at least in my experience, it felt that uh, it just makes Veldstad more difficult than he should be. Veldstad isn't difficult. Uh, again, though, as I mentioned, the first time I did fight him, it, you know, he just made me rage for quite a fucking while. I don't even know why I had such an issue with this in fucking character, but I did. And then I figured out the easy way to beat him, and I guess the difficult thing about um, Veltstat is that he has a really sketchy hitbox, like, towards you. Like, he could hit you, like, a mile away for some reason. But without further ado, let's just get in here. But before I do, let's make sure that we have some sort of protection going on over here. How about we use the Dark Ring? Mm. Yeah, Ring of Giants, Poise. Uh, let's go with the Stone Ring, I suppose. And I suppose that'll do, right? Wait, anything else? Ah, we could use Havel's Leggings now. Alright, sure, let's use Havel's Leggings. To give me a little bit of extra defense, because this fucker could hit like a truck.
Alrighty, after that introduction of Velstead, let's just go in here really quickly. He loves to initially start off by just kicking you in the face to break your guard, so keep that in mind. What I've noticed with Velstad would actually really make things a lot easier for me is to actually use the Halberd. Having a little bit of range for him is really good because of his really sketchy hitbox that I've mentioned before. Um, Velstad, what makes him difficult is not only the sketchy hitbox, but the fact that uh, around halfway through his health, he will power up like really, really crazy. He'll take a lot less damage, he will do a lot more damage. And again, as you can see, his attacks are really easily capable of breaking your guards and whatnot, so keep that in mind. I like to keep a little bit away from him, and even after he powers up especially is when I like to keep away from him, because it does then make the fight a lot easier. So let me just kind of keep a distance for a degree here. One, two. It's probably best for you to also figure out his attack pattern before you go in there too deep. So that'll kind of almost take him down to halfway health. He's gonna do his power up attack pretty fast this time around. This also gives you a few chance to get a few hits in though, so be sure to use that to your advantage, whatever you have to do. Alright, so he's just about almost done. What I'm going to do now is kind of go away. Okay, that was not going away, but and that almost cost me my life. At this point, he is almost capable of one hit, like, you know, basically doing one hit kills. So, definitely be careful, keep your guard up, if anything, if you can't really roll through. And the moment he jumps back is your cue to jump, run over here as soon as possible. He'll circle around and try to uh, attack you, but then this completely leaves him open, and this is what made Velstat to me really easy. Okay, once I figure that out. Don't do anything just yet, Velstat. Let me heal up. Alright. <laughs> that was really... I was hoping that it would not hit me, but it did. Alright, Velstat. That fucking column got in my way there. Do your uh, thing, man. No, don't come at me right now. You might fucking kill me. Let me pop a uh, thing here. <laughs> This guy, it's really scary to be honest with you. I'm not sure what it is about Vels that he always has my number. I would just love you to do your uh, dark attack thingy, man. Just go go back there and do your dark attack. I'm giving you range. There you go. The moment he jumps back is your cue to just run in here. Again, you could try to fight him regularly. You can succeed at it. I've done it that way as well, but it's too much of a it's too much of a risk, I feel, when you could just easily trigger that attack for him and then you'll be able to get a few hits on him and he becomes easy this way. Uh, when you try to go mano a mano with him, it's a lot more difficult because I've mentioned the sketchy hitboxes on this uh, boss, and that's what made it completely difficult. And overall, we finally beat Velstad, which is essentially the uh, Lord Vendrick's uh, guard that was always at his side. He was like a shadow to Vendrick, and Vendrick's actually going to be over here, so let's go take a look at Lord Vendrick. This is what our quest is culminating to. And... This is Lord Vendrick. And I love the atmosphere for this area. The song is really, really, like, really cryptic, like, really ominous. Um, Lord Vendrick is indeed completely hollow. He is completely lost to the world. He's not going to attack you. You can attack him now, but I wouldn't advise it just yet. Um, yeah, but he's over here in the crypt. He's completely hollow. The curse overtook him. He's taken off his clothes. He's no longer even the king. He does have the king's, uh... I guess, uh, crown on still, but he seems to wander around and not do a damn thing to you. But we finally got what we need to continue here, which is the King's Ring, and this will give us access to all the areas that had been unlocked to us beforehand. And Emerald Hill is going to make her appearance over here as well. This ring is the symbol of the King. Use it to gain passage through the King's Gate. And venture to the Far East, bearer of the curse. If you are to be the next monarch, then one day you will walk those grounds without really knowing why. Alright, Emerald Herald. Cryptic as usual. So there we go. This is basically our quest. So, um, hopefully you guys enjoyed Dark Souls 2. We are, uh, <laughs> no, we're not done yet. Uh, there's still a few more things to do. Uh, as you can see, though, this basically solidifies the fact that Vendrick is not the villain of the game, even though that's what you've let, or so far, thought that was the case. But we're going to finish it up right here. I'm just going to go back to uh, Majula and then head to our next area that we're going to go to. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this episode. If you did, I encourage you to click the thumbs up button. The support really does mean a lot. And um, we're almost hitting the end game of Dark Souls 2. So we have like, a few more areas to cover and then we'll be pretty much good to go. So hopefully you guys enjoyed it. I'll catch you next time.